Coming up on TechZilla, touchscreen phones and winner, we're going to help this combination suck a whole lot less. XBMC goes arm. We got a good reason to jailbreak your Apple TV or iPad. Shut Facebook down before your kid flunks out of college. And am I dumb enough to crack open a perfectly good iPhone 4 on camera? Fire up the toaster and get the cheesy toast supplies, because TechZilla starts now. This episode of TechZilla is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Building, mining, and electronics brought to you exclusively by Element 14. Go to Assist Express, support smarter with Go to Assist Express. And West Toast, offering premium web hosting since 1998. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to TechZilla. Hands-on reviews of the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or the hot new caliber for pig hunting, we got an answer for you. Can mm. we read? Pigs. <laughs> Pigs. Mm. We like pig. I do like pig. Pig. Roast pig. I like most pig. parts of the pig. Fried pig. Fried pig. Fried pig. Bacon. You know what I miss so much? God, I miss pork rolls so much. That could be taken horribly out of context, but what I'm talking about is a delicious, like, Canadian bacon-like mm -hmm. treat that is basically only available in the Jersey area. I can t actually, you know what? Scolari's. Alameda. Here? Yeah. Get out. The guy that runs Scolari's in Alameda is from Jersey and imports <gasps> pork roll. <sighs> hey, if we don't know, we'll track down someone who does, an expert type person. By the I'm way, if you've expert. got a YouTube account, now, now that we've totally gone on this whole, like, uh, mm, pork roll sandwiches. If you've got a YouTube account, we'd be all kinds of happy if you'd subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash tech8d, XBMC, Facebook credits, or anniversaries. Pick XBMC, one. XBMC, baby. <laughs> the open source media player that powers Boxy and Plex is now on the Apple TV 2, iPad, and iPhone 4. If you're willing to jailbreak your Apple hardware, that is. The jailbreaking is the hard part. Installing XBMC is actually pretty painless. If you have a big old media collection that isn't formatted all Apple and iTunes friendly, running XBMC on the $99 ATV 2 is pretty slick, including XBMC says full hardware decode for 720p and 1080p movies. And Gadget's video tour is pretty cool. 1080p can get a little bit choppy, we hear, but 720 works just spiffy. So props to the XBMC crew on their first ARM CPU port. If the rumbles at CES were any indication, there should be a lot of new hardware this will run on very soon. And very fast, yes. if NVIDIA has anything to do with it. Steve Jobs, not the only tech executive in the news last week. From the, I think that's what Dad used to call a high-class problem department, <laughs> Eric Schmidt lost $300 million in like two days. Uh, you might know him as the CEO of the adult supervision that grew Google from $100 million to $29 billion a year. was worth $5.9 billion until after the announcement that Schmidt would step down and be replaced by co-founder Larry Page. The stock dropped 30 bucks a share down to like 608 bucks, leaving his 9.2 million shares worth about $5.6 billion. Don't feel too bad for Mr. Schmidt. He's scoring a $100 million equity award after his departure. Some people are calling it severance pay because he felt like he wasn't done at Google. And props to all things D for that particularly charming angle. Yeah, he's still going to be around, though. And he's, he's still like, yeah, getting he's, his $1 a year paycheck as well. He's got the whole chairman of the board action going yeah. on or executive chairman of the board. I have a feeling. He'll be fine. <laughs> yes, uh, while we're reporting from the filthy lucre department, uh, Facebook has figured out how to make money off the all those games that live within Facebook by forcing them forcing them to use the Facebook credits payment system, from which, of course, Facebook scores a sweet 30%. That's what I've read. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not a super huge change, though. Uh, Zynga's Farmville already lets you buy pumpkin seeds using credits, and there are already millions of Facebook users trafficking in the virtual currency. Yeah, and, and if, I'm, if I understand it all correctly, y'all know I don't spend a lot of time in the Facebook, as my parents would say. Yeah. Um, Facebook has a dollar, like a Facebook credit is equal one dollar, which mm -hmm. to me makes a lot more sense than Xbox points. Oh, Microsoft points make no, no sense yeah. at all. No. I, I on Xbox like, or on Zune, it's like, what am I? I guess Zune is, is dollar for dollar, I, I mean, think. If the whole point is to confuse you so you never have any idea what you're spending, unless mm. it's like, you know I mean, like, like when I'm in Mexico, I know exactly what everything costs, even if it's in pesos, because I'm down there so often, I can do the math in my head. Okay. 
but maybe that's how it and works. And it's like for the Xbox yen to the dollar because you just move the decimal point over a few. And it's like roughly, <laughs> roughly. what you're paying, roughly. And while we don't have jetpacks yet, if you connect your printer to the Google Cloud print application, you'll be able to print, quote, from any app on any device, OS, or browser without the need to install drivers. Which, if I can, if everybody listen closely, somewhere there's an IT administrator weeping. <laughs> weeping because he's waited his whole career for this moment. They're rolling nice. it out this week. I suspect it'll start. Well, I, I know I'm going to start playing around with it inside of Chrome mm -hmm. and then work my way onto other devices. So yeah, I've got an e-print enabled printer already. The the HP All-in-One B210A. Printer. So it's not just a so printer. I can print from my iPad and my It's a thing. server and a dog walker. It's magic. It's magic. It's magical. This is for all the nice people in the Techzilla crew that don't have to drive three or four hours to experience winter like all of us. Well, if we want to have winter, we have to drive hours. Basically, we're talking to everybody here that knows the pain of using touch screens on phones in 10 degree weather. Like Adam, who writes in, hey Patrick and Veronica, I'm an iPhone owner who lives in the occasionally frozen wasteland that is Northeast Ohio. I use my iPhone for everything, but since the screen only responds to your skin, oh, capacitive, 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 capacitive touch screens, <laughs> capacitive. Anyhow, he's resorted to cutting the index finger and thumbs off his gloves each year. I hated having to take my gloves off every time I got a text. Sadly, the gloves typically only last a single season before they are falling apart as a result. I've been searching but have had no luck, so I was wondering if you knew of a site or company that sells some high-quality gloves made without an index finger and thumb. Call me crazy, but I think Solid Snake had some at some point. Can you help, or are they simply too ridiculous to exist? Thank you so much, Adam. I will say, if you're okay with the whole DIY cutting off the thumb and finger, have it done by a seamstress. Probably available, if not in an actual sort of local person who makes clothing, go to a dry cleaning shop and find somebody yeah. who does alter. I'm just saying. Just cut them off and then cauterize the ends. Well, to pay, the wool doesn't cauterize. Yeah, it would work leather doesn't. Well, leather doesn't unravel it. In, in any case. Don't do that to your nice leather gloves. That would, would be crazy. Be, it's shocking, actually, yeah. how many options there are. You could just this. burn a little hole through the bottom with the lighter. We, we could talk about the pre-made ones. Well, yes, there are some actually pretty <laughs> decent pre-made offerings uh, that we saw at CES this year. Um, but I didn't actually get a chance to try them right. out, but I kept hearing people buzzing about them all over the place. First up are Quirky Digits. Uh, these are really great because they'll work with your existing gloves. You don't need to buy a new set. They actually have a little pin that sticks through. So they have brass backs and a conductive silicone front that enables you to use a touchscreen device, like your iPhone, for example. You can buy them directly from their website at quirky.com, and they're $13.99 a, uh, for a four pack. Also shown this year at CES were the Urban Gloves from Telefingers. I like the name. Telefingers. Telefingers. Um, these are a little more um, industrial looking. Ha, that, that's, they look like something you, They look like something you would wear if you're on the, the deck of a boat handling yeah. crab. Or like if, you're, you, if, you, you, if you don't have like a hot, hot glove. Right. Like they're the glove shaped ones where you can stick your hand. It look like that. You know what I'm talking about. Um, they also have that rubbery grip so that you won't drop your phone when it gets too cold out. And it will work with any capacitive touch screen. These gloves will set you back about 20 bucks and they're shipping now as well. Personally, I, I would rather have the quirky digits because I'd like to use my own gloves and the other ones were a little too manny. A little too manny? A little too mannish. A little too industrial. Yeah. I'm not punching holes through my gloves to put little strange brass thumbtacks in there, although I'm sure the idea is pretty cool outside of my head. A few other options that have been out for a while, dotsgloves.com, again, it seems to like them. Uh, unfortunately, these fantastic, like, they're basically like wool gloves with little dots on them. They carry the electricity from your fingers. Those are sold out through February. I touch gloves, stylish. Very stylish, actually. It started about hundred bucks, but they look like if. But if you wear, you know, if you wear a decent suit, you got a thousand dollar top. That's coat, more expensive than wanna... my fancy gloves that I own. Well, these my are fancy, fancy gloves, gloves that work that with your iPhone. That actually work with your iPhone. Yeah. These are fancier Fair than enough. your fancy gloves. Freehand gloves, uh, not so fancy. About twenty bucks a pair. The finger and the thumb pop off. If I used you want to do the those. whole pop off finger thumb thing. Those are the ones I used to have. Really? Yeah, they have a little flap, and you pull the, the finger flap. back. The thumb those flap. Are nice. Those are nice. Yeah. Or you could just go to Cabela's.com uh, or some local sporting good store that sells camping and hunting gear and look for fingerless wool like fingerless rag wool gloves i have two pair one of which is like 20 years old yeah and like a thread started to unravel but, after 15 years but when they're when it's that cold out you don't want any 
I actually, I, I don't get that cold, in your so armor. The, the, the fingerless gloves mm -hmm. work for me. Or you can check out uh, glove mitts, which is something Capella does a lot of different, there's a lot of variations on it where it's, it's a fingerless glove with a mitten top that pulls over it and yeah. a little thumb top. And the hunters have been using those forever and ice fishermen and people who get all outdoorsy in terrible, terrible, terrible weather. I want to try the digits. I want to see if I, we can get some of those in and test them out. Though it doesn't get very cold here. Well, you could drive to, you could use that. I mean, you know, you could, we could get a walk-in freezer. You could go on the freezer and you could try them out. That's like a terrible idea. <laughs> I want to know if the brass conducts cold from outside. It's possible. It's possible. That's a good point. Yeah. Anyway, We're going to send the Veronica the Belmont to Alaska. Anyway, coming up next, um, <laughs> Patrick cracks open his iPhone, mocks Apple's pentalobe, and installs wood paneling. It's time now, though, to thank one of our sponsors, The Ben Heck Show and Element 14. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you exclusively by Element 14, the online store and community for electronics design engineers. In the latest episode, Ben builds a solar-powered Kindle and kinetic motion charger for power-hungry devices like Android phones. Check it out at element14.com slash tbhs. Somebody on this set that isn't me was all cranky on Twitter last week. Screw Apple and their pentalope security screws. I fix it has the tools. That was you. It was me, it was actually. You. And, and I swear this actually has something to do with the Jackbacks wood back replacements for the iPhone. Uh, Adam at jackbacks.com is Techzilla viewer and hope we would check out his wooden iPhone backs. Sweet. Yeah, they're basically, I, I think he actually shaves the back of the iPhone down and then inlays wood. Uh, uh, and they can actually do uh, laser oh, yeah. etching on there for the designs on there. Um, some folks, though, might have problems replacing the backs because of the dreaded pentalo. A pentalo. <laughs> yes, iFixit says this screw head first appeared in the mid 2009 MacBook Pro as a fastener for the battery. The 2010 MacBook Air uses a screw on the lower case to prevent any access to the internals. Many non US iPhone 4 units have had similar versions of these evil screws all along. Apple has switched production and new U.S. units are shipping with the evil screws. If you take your phone into Apple for any kind of service, they will sabotage it by replacing your screws with the new tamper-resistant screws. So, they sell the iPhone 4 Liberation Kit for $9.95 on iFixit. It includes a special driver to remove Apple's proprietary pentalobular screws, a new pair of Phillips 00 screws, and a 00 Phillips screwdriver to install them. So did you already get that on your iPhone, or are you in the middle of that right now? Uh, I have the Philips on that. It's actually a pretty, the for, you know, we talk like we're going to destroy my phone by doing this, but it's pretty painless. The, the I almost might say that Apple might be going to the pentalobular screw because it gives you more mating service between the screw and the driver. I think you said mating. Um, it's, yes, I, I just have to say that both and Roger driver. and I, Roger in my head and I out loud at the same time said, <laughs> he said mating. Well, once you unmate the screws from the iPhone case, it's pretty simple. You basically slide the back over, and you lift it up, slide and lift. Did you turn it off lift. first? Uh, this time I did turn it off. Okay. Earlier when we practiced this, I left it on because I'm a wild man. And you, base, you know, it's, there's two pretty obvious slots where the screws, the mating surfaces go in there. Press down with your thumbs, and you slide it back over, and then squeeze a little bit and reinsert the little tiny screws. Um, there is one major flaw to the jackbacks, which is that if you are using anything other than a bumper, your case mm. will probably not fit after it is installed. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, the Z on the jackbacks is a little deeper than the Z for the regular iPhone back. So mm -hmm. I know uh, at least the couple cases I had around here, my OtterBox case doesn't fit. Another one we had laying around here does not fit because it's essentially a little bit thicker. However, if you are a sort of reliable human being who does not constantly drop your iPhone like I do, and you do not need the protection of a back, this, this might be ideal and wonderful. Very nice, and you can get them customized too, huh? Yeah, you can actually, in this case, uh, Adam was kind enough to put the Revision 3 logo on one of the backs for us. I will say they are not inexpensive. Mm -hmm. it's How much? 89 bucks for the back, 99 bucks if you want it to have the laser etching action on it, but he'll do any kind of laser etching little fit on there. Um, I think they're pretty cool. I would like a slightly tighter fit in the corners uh, because I was raised by 
irritating people in the furniture industry, but I actually think it looks really good and it is very distinctive. If you want to know yeah. which iPhone is yours, this will do it. You know, just spend 15 bucks and get a jealous skin with a wood finish. To make it probably find way. one. I'm just saying, these are awesome. But if you want to go the cheap route that doesn't look quite as finished and Jell skins make stuff like that too. If you don't mind fake plastic wood on the interior of your vehicle, by oh, um, actually, I love Jell skins. They do Jell awesome skins are design. Great. I'm just saying, but if this you, is awesome. This I, is wood. It's real wood. wood. And I also saw a really cool um, version of this thing, of this kind of thing, on um, Unplugged a few months ago that was a brushed aluminum back. I'll have to find the name of the guy that was doing it, but I tweeted it out and he, he got inundated with orders. I'm like, yeah, because it looks like an old school iPhone. It's rad. It is pretty rad. So I, I love, you know, making something like this individualized. Individualized. As they say. So Adam, thanks for the opportunity to take a look at these. Jack's backs. Jackbacks.com is the website. 89 bucks for the plane, $99 for etching. And I got to say, it feels nice. Yeah, it's we need very more nice. wooden iPhones. We need more wooden electronics. Room. I would like a wooden computer. All right. Well, coming up next, convince your kids going to flunk out with a little help from the Facebook. We can help. But first, it's time now to thank one of our sponsors, GoToAssist Express. If you work with clients and colleagues to resolve computer issues, I have an incredible remote support tool that will make you look like a hero while saving you time and money, and also boosting productivity. Go to Assist Express, brought to you by Citrix, lets you easily resolve computer issues in real time or after hours while your customers are away from their computers, allowing you to be more productive. In fact, on average, go to Assist Express users report a 40% increase in productivity. That's like getting two extra workdays back a week. TechZilla viewers can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit GoToAssist.com slash TechZilla. That's GoToAssist.com slash TechZilla for a free trial. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, object.com, or perhaps oobject.com, I'm not sure. I'm still a little confused about what this site, oobject, is for, um, but from what I can gather, it's a curated group of lists of things that go together. Okay, well, maybe seeing is easier than explaining. Here, for example, is a list of vintage monorails. You can see the world's very first monorail in Ireland. Wait, Ireland? Uh, okay, and then here's a list of depressing properties in London that cost more than a million dollars, like that scruffy piece of land by a canal. Oh, and speaking of vintage, here is a list of vintage prosthetic limbs. As you can see, once you start looking around the site, you get pulled into some really interesting and random lists. They're all curated by actual paid people, so the quality of the images and links are really good. You can vote on which of the images from the list are your favorites, share them out, or just browse for hours. Check out all the crazy lists over at object.com today. And thanks to Sam M on Facebook for pointing this one out to us. Mark wrote in this question asking us, I purchase an iMac 27 inch and occasionally use Bootcamp to go into Windows 7. I do want to be able to read and write onto my external hard drive, formatting for Mac, but I do not want to mount the Macintosh HD primary hard drive in Windows 7. Is there a way to prevent Macintosh HD from mounting in Windows 7 so that viruses and other crap do not infect any files on that drive? Mark. Uh, that shouldn't be an issue, right? That's, are you still with the phone? Um, I was a, we he, moved on. I know. The back is a little thick for my... Uh, oh, is it? It does seem to be a Bummer. little thick for my case. We're still working on that. In any case... Any case. Windows can't read or write HMS Plus anyway without third-party software. As a matter of fact, since viruses and Trojans are written to execute in Windows, they won't really work in OS X. They'll just sit there like dead little pieces of code. Basically ignored, like, like the poetry Dead little I wrote turds in on the sidewalk. Dead little turds on the sidewalk, which are shockingly common in San Francisco. As opposed many of the to people... the living turds. <laughs> well, let's not go there. Hey, look, it's an external drive. You just unplug it when you run boot camp. The reality is, is boot camp is charming and delightful and astonishingly effective. And is one more reason why OS X can quite rightfully, on a good day, thumb its nose at Windows. And I am a passionate user of Windows. I love the Windows. I love Windows 7. But Boot Camp is pretty slick. I just want to make sure that people didn't think I was talking about human turds. I was actually thinking more like Mr. Hankey's running around in the streets of San Francisco. That Howdy. kind of living turd. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going there. 
Next up, we have a question from a concerned Jason. He writes, we have a college kid living with us who is neglecting his homework dun, for dun, Facebook. Dun. I want to know if there is a way to block Facebook at night without losing other internet access because some of his classes require internet access. We currently use a Linksys WRT54G router. Is there a router that will block websites by times or a piece of software I can install so we can keep our access but he loses access to Facebook at night? Thanks, Jason S. P.S. I know I can block it permanently, but the wife still wants her Facebook during normal hours. That's a perfectly reasonable request. I think so, too. Um, most newer routers and older routers with a firmware update support blocking specific yeah. websites. It's not too difficult. Um, in your case, you'll need to go into the Access Restrictions tab in the router's web interface. Select Edit List of PCs to add the MAC address from the offending student's machine. You can usually find this in the network settings, or if he's logged on before, the router should have a record of it in the DHCP table under the status tab. Then select the appropriate service you want blocked. In this case, HTTP and HTTPS. Just enter the URL for the site and you should be good to go. Other options, though, um, include using a DNS service like OpenDNS to block or blacklist sites in their entirety. The basic or free option at OpenDNS will allow up to 25 domains to be either black or whitelisted. Which might work a little better if the student in question is clever and tries to use you basically yeah. access Facebook through third-party programs or alternative programs. That's true. That's true. You can't just block it from one place. Um, you will need to poke in the router settings for either one of these to work. So if you're unsure about what you're doing, consult the manual or the PDF first or look up online forums. The other thing to do is cattle prods. I, th I think a cattle prod was the most powerful tool that was available in our dome just to motivate students. And the more you block someone, the more they're just going to try to get it through other methods. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Hey, look, I've been sober for 20 years. Sometimes you got to let people bottom out, fail out of college, ruin their lives, and realize that maybe they should have spent less time on Facebook and more time doing their calculus homework. There you go. Just saying. Yeah. Coming up next, we bring Jolly Cloud to Ubuntu, listen to the radio over the Wi-Fi and bring sweet, sweet joy to a viewer that almost bought the expensive HDMI cables. But first, a word from one of our sponsors. West Host have been offering premium web hosting since 1998. Super affordable, but, I mean, we're talking as little as 19 cents a day, but they don't skimp on service. Free US-based support via chat, via email, and a 24-7 phone support system, and free website transfers, and the 60-day money-back guarantee if you decide, and I can't imagine why you don't like them. All this on top of great server performance and access to hundreds of one-click install applications. Now, we have a fat, ginormous discount for you because you're a Texilla viewer. You can get an exclusive 25% discount off web hosting. All you got to do is visit westhost.com slash Texilla. Westhost.com slash Texilla. You'll score 25% off web hosting. We'll get credit for it with Westhost, and the show will keep rolling to your inbox twice a week. How do you like that? John in Vancouver emailed in asking, I live in a basement suite that appears to have walls lined with lead, so it hinders my ability to listen to the radio. Yeah, I'm old school. I listen to the local college radio station here, CITR, and my old station back home in Alberta, CKXU. They both have online streams, a shoutcast if I'm not mistaken. Is there a device like a clock radio that uses Wi-Fi so I could stream an online radio station with? It's not too efficient to run my computer all night so I can listen to the radio while I fall asleep. Another option is an iPhone app. I have a 3GS, so maybe I can use that too. A sleep timer and an alarm function would be ideal. John in Vancouver. Um, though it does not have an alarm function. Like, you know, you could run a wire, if you, assuming there is a single window to the outside world mm -hmm. in his Faraday cage of a basement apartment of doom and, and darkness, he mm -hmm. could run a little FM antenna outside hmm. and run that back to his radio. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. You could do that. It's, you know, a little old school. <laughs> well, he already said he's old school, so maybe he's into that. I, it's a thought. Well, the new school options, um, my top pick would be for you to pick up the Sonos Zone Player S5. Um, you can Fancy. use it with the free iPhone app to listen to streaming radio stations from around the world, as well as content from your home network, Rhapsody, Pandora, pretty much any music source is possible. Plus, it does support Shoutcast right out of the box. Um, then if you get the separate wireless dock, you can use any app from your iPhone to play music, including, you know, iTunes and everything else. Mm -hmm. I also use it for Audible all the time. Many alarm apps have a sleep function that turn themselves off after a certain amount of time, 
like Alarm Clock by iHandysoft, which is the one that I personally used. It's not cheap though for the Sonos S5. It's gonna run you around $399. Ooh. It's a little on the expensive side. Um, but another option would be the Logitech Squeeze Box Radio. It has a built-in display, unlike the Sonos. And you can also listen to a ton of online music mm -hmm. sources. It's a little less expensive than the S5. Um, you can find it online for under 200 bucks. There are also like 42,000 streaming radio applications available. Right, and then if you have an alarm iPhone. clock, mm -hmm. you can probably just buy a standard alarm clock and use the audio in jack, which mm -hmm. most of them have these days, and then just keep your iPod or iPhone running plugged all night in. Long. <laughs> you can leave it running all night long. I mean, when I'm on the road, I use that alarm clock app as my alarm clock, and it stays running all night. We got a, one of iHome's iPhone docks for my wife, and I don't know if it'll work with a streaming internet application. It works really well yeah. with audio that's already been recorded or that yeah. is in the iTunes collection. So if you, I have those, I have mm -hmm. several of those at home actually. I don't several? know, they just accumulate <laughs> over the years. Um, and I have the alarm clock one and then I just right. have the speaker set one. They've got like six alarm clock ones. The, the Tell older me you don't ones, have them all. I don't. The <laughs> older ones don't work well with iPhones mm -hmm. because they have all the interference problems. Right. The newer ones might be better shielded, but the old ones you still get the dee 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 and that's really annoying, but I, I used to use that one all the time. Over, over time though, I've noticed the audio quality degrading a lot. I think it's just the speakers has become blown out right. or something just over time, they have gotten a lot less great. I, I should also mention while we're talking about speakers blowing out, there are a lot of inexpensive made in who knows where, sort of like internet radio available for $95 from whatever.com or on eBay. And at least one of these who shall remain nameless because I can't remember the name of it, uh, would shock Serafina every time she'd like touched it to change the station, she would get a little shock and jump out of her chair and get really agitated. So, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that a lot of the appliances that are dedicated to internet radio suck. So shop carefully. Squeeze what I've been box doing, and S5 do not suck though. No, they don't suck. Uh, what I've also been doing is using a very old iPhone <laughs> um, on Wi-Fi only because right. it doesn't have a card in it anymore and using that to play RDO on the iHome systems. <laughs> So I don't have to worry about missing calls or anything because it's just an old, it's basically an iPod at this point. And I just use it to stream music over that. You could do that with radio stations too. I'm laughing because I'm like, I now know what the U-Haul looked like when you guys moved. It, <laughs> there was like half electronics to be stacked on your side of the house yeah. and like a couch. <laughs> basically. Uh, Nick and Marilyn wanted to know, I've recently started using Jolie Cloud on my netbook and I love it. Jolie Cloud uses web apps on the home screen area, but I can't find out how to create them. Ubuntu, which is what Jolie Cloud is based off of, doesn't seem to have any tools to create them. Any ideas? Um, yeah, I wish I had my laptop in front of me, my little netbook, but I can tell you how to get there. It's actually pretty easy. Um, first, you just copy the address of the website you want, mm -hmm. then go into the terminal. Type in Prism once you have it open, and then follow the on-screen instructions for that pop-up window. Then you want to paste in the address that you want to make into a web app, like TechMeme, for example, and then you can just find it right there on the desktop after cool. you're done. The next person who says you aren't serious about netbooks gets slapped. That's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, I, I've kept my, my HP Mini 1000 around to use Jolie Cloud on. I've got the Dell Mini 10. So I have older generations of netbooks, but I haven't thought to even buy one in a really long time or use one. They've been, it's kind of been sitting gathering dust for a while, to tell <laughs> you the truth. Since the iPad came out. But you can use Jolie Cloud on the web app, too. Yeah. I mean, you can Jolly use Clouds it on the are, web. I mean, Jolie Cloud's really slick, not just for it's netbooks, beautiful. but for yeah. on PCs and stuff, too, I think. Well, it's a great PCs little OS. so much like notebooks. Mm -hmm. it's, yes. Totally. It's very cool. Hey, our final email comes from Ryan. He wrote in, every time I buy an HDTV, how many times have you bought an HDTV, Ryan? <laughs> he says, I try to get suckered into buying a gold-plated HDMI cable, and I have to explain to them why I won't buy their fancy-pantsy gold-plated reinforced aerodynamic super cable. I was excited to hear you guys say that about HDMI cables last week because it's something I always try to stress to my friends and family. I was disappointed that you didn't explain why we shouldn't buy expensive HDMI cables. The thing to realize about HDMI cables and digital cables and we know this and, and we have actually explained it several times in the past. We were just kind of hammering home the $2 cable thing is HDMI cables are digital signals, zeros and ones. There is no chance of the signal becoming degraded unless the cable gets cut. Cheaper cables will not reduce the sharpness of the picture, add noise, wash out colors, or inflict damage on your beautiful HD TV picture from your Blu-ray player or anything else. As long as the signal reaches its destination, hence my whole cutting the cable thing, with its ones and zeros intact, the image quality will be just as good as the source that sent it. 
There may be cables out there that manage to screw up the signal. The result would be no signal at all or possibly freezing blocks, which I haven't come across to this day. The only problem I had was with a, ironically, monster cable <laughs> that would lose signal when I walked across the room because there was a frayed connection and the movement of the floor wouldn't move it enough to break the connection. So spend the money on that extra DVD or three. Blu-ray, Ryan, Blu-ray. And laugh at the absurd claims the manufacturers put on the big box brands. Ryan in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yeah. Excellent. Look, we've, we've said it. We, we're closing in on 200 episodes. Some months, it seems like, on every other episode. We've said it before, we'll say it again. Digital signals do not degrade. Expensive cables do not improve your HDMI signal from anything to anything. If someone's telling you that you need a $140 HDMI cable and it's like not 25 meters or longer and designed to be installed in the wall of your house. You know what you tell them? Suck it! <laughs> That's much cooler than what I was going to say. It's and, catchphrase. And, and, yeah. No. Just say no. Just say no no to expensive HDMI cables. Unless you're like somebody who travels with an HDMI cable for part of a presentation and you're constantly going to be like rolling it up and unrolling and unrolling it. In which case, buy 40 HDMI cables. <laughs> Save yourself you still 40 pay bucks. The same amount. <laughs> yeah, over that, <laughs> uh, you know. Okay, buy 25 like three foot HDMI cables, put them all in your bag along with the five DVD blue DVDs or 12 DVDs you can buy and you'll still have 20 bucks left over from lunch. Instead yes. of buying that overpriced super cool brand name HDMI cable that is just lying on its box. All right. Well, hey, uh, we might be helping parents block the Facebook, you know, for the kids, but you can come hang with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash techzilla. But only if your homework's done. Mm -hmm. If you're not in the mood to fire up email, feel free to tweet us a question at techzilla, at Veronica, at Patrick Norton, or at Robert Heron. And look, we live on your emails, so email us techzilla at revision3.com. Tech help, product reviews, how to's, you ask us, we'll do it. We'll even share your hot tips, but we need those emails to do it. So don't be shy, send them into techzilla at revision3.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Till next time, you've been watching Techzilla. Oh, and happy fifth anniversary to Ryan. Oh. You guys got buried? No. <laughs>